Hello all and welcome to another episode of Everyday Black History. Now today on Everyday Black History, we're going to be talking about uh, Garrett Morgan's invention. inventions. We had an episode a while ago where we talked about a brother by the name of Garrett Morgan who uh, is an, was an inventor, uh, entrepreneur, community leader, and he was responsible for a lot of inventions, a lot of inventions that are used today. And we just wanted to have a separate episode where we highlighted specifically his inventions because he invented a lot of different things. Um, so, uh, first off, one of the things, the first one of the early things that he invented was hair care products. And it's interesting how he came upon this invention uh, when he was um, experimenting with a liquid that gave sewing machine needles a high polish that prevented the needle from scorching fabric. Um, as it sold, he accidentally discovered that that same liquid could also straighten hair. And this discovery was made in 1905. So he made the liquid into a cream and launched the G.A. Uh, Morgan Hair Refining Company to market, it, to market it. He also made black hair oil dye and invented a hot tooth comb for hair straightening in 1910. And those, these are things that, you know, women have used uh, all throughout the last, you know, century <laughs> or more. And uh, Garrett Morgan was one of the early inventors uh, of these things, uh, uh, as well as Madam C.J. Walker, who we all know. And as well as uh, his hair care products, he also invented uh, a version of the traffic light. And his traffic light was one of the first traffic lights to have the third warning system, the red, the yellow, and the green. As a... Uh, you know, automobiles were introduced um, at the turn of the 20th century with pedestrians, bicycles, uh, horse-drawn wagons, motor vehicles, and even in places like Brooklyn, where I'm from, you know, you had trolley cars, trolley cars in San Francisco as well. They all had to share the roads. So to deal with the growing problem of traffic and traffic accidents, a number of versions of the traffic signaling devices were developed starting around 1913. Now, Garrett Morgan came upon his invention when he saw a serious accident at an intersection. So he filed for a patent for a traffic control device having a third warning position in 1922. And the patent was granted in 1923. Uh, though, as mentioned, this was not the first um, uh, system to have a three light warning system. That was introduced by another man in 1920, uh, William Potts. Um, but his uh, had an audible warning as well. And he sold the rights to uh, General Electric for $40,000. So you can imagine how much money that was back then. It made him a very wealthy man. And uh, as mentioned, he also invented, invented a self-extinguishing cigarette. Um, and and uh, he invented that later on in his life. Um, it was a self-extinguishing cigarette which used a, a a plastic pellet filled with water um, before the filter that extinguished the cigarette. Now, the invention that he's most famously known for is the safety hood, which later became the gas mask. And he came upon this invention um, when he saw the difficulty that firefighters had when they were, um, you know, fighting fires. So uh, his device used a wet sponge to filter out smoke and cool the air. It also had tubes that hung uh, close to the floor uh, beneath the, the rising smoke, which allowed for fresh air to go into the mass so that a firefighter or anyone in those hospi inhospitable conditions could last in them a little longer to maybe uh, save some lives. Now, he created a company, the National Safety Device Company, in 1914 and market it. And he would even dress up like a uh, big native, native indigenous American and would put on the gas mask, uh, have a teepee filled with smoke, and he would go and sit inside the teepee for 20 minutes to show how useful the gas mask was. Now, he actually um, was able to show how effective it was in 1916 when a tunnel, a tunnel explosion under Lake Erie uh, trapped some workers that were there. And many men, who the workers who went to go rescue these men, a lot of them went in and didn't come out there a lot of the rescue attempts failed so garrett morgan his brother came down there with a bunch of his smoke hoods and he and his brother went and saved individually saved 
he saved about four people. His brother saved about two or three people. And then after that, other rescue workers were able to go in using their smoke hood that Gary Morgan invented and save many, many lives and get those people out of there. Now, unfortunately, due to the times uh, of racism in the country, um, the newspapers tried to exclude him and his brother from this historic rescue. But people in the town um, where it happened, you know, grouped together and, you know, showed everybody that they were the ones who um, provided the rescue, provided the equipment that was needed to for this safe rescue. They showed their appreciation by getting together and getting a plaque made for these men and letting everyone know that it was them who actually saved these people's lives. Now, um, he... Uh, as mentioned, after his invention, uh, fire departments all over the country put in orders for the smoke hood after they saw how effective it was. Uh, so even his community leadership, Garrett Morgan, he started an organization, uh, Cleveland Association of Colored Men in 1908, just because he wanted to help, you know, young black men like himself uh, to get on their to get on their feet. And he wanted to be an example in his community, seeing how, you know, we all were struggling in the country. So, uh, as we can see, Garrett Morgan invented a lot, a lot of inventions that we still see useful today. The gas mask, the traffic light, um, hair care products. So we can see how useful his inventions was, how it uh, changed our way of life, and how important it is to black culture. And for people to know that it was you know, a black man who created these things. So, uh, Garrett Morgan, thank you for your contribution. And once again, we want to say that we salute you for it. Uh, that concludes this episode of Everyday Black History. Please tune in again soon.